Now we're actually in part three. So we see in this, now these, this time around, we see something a little bit different. They wear as outer clo clo clothing, at least many of them, so that you could see visually their religion. Nothing about their personality. You can't see their personality. Their personality is totally covered up. But we see their religion. To learn about their personality, you got to take that extra step and allow yourself to get to know them and find out they're decent folk, you know. Uh, and, and usually you find out they're, they're pretty decent folk. As far as that I can tell, I've run into no particular problem despite the profiling that goes on and perhaps even some of my own prejudice, the fact of the life is they turn out to be pretty decent folk. But they bring in another religion. And this time we can see it with our eyes. And it seems like, because I, I've had to minister to many, many Muslims, for some reason or another, they see gays for Jesus, and that means to them they need to try to convert me to Islam or some I don't know. Online, I get a ton of Muslims coming to me and wanting to, to teach me how the Bible is corrupt and uh, so forth and so on. And so I get a chance to talk with them at length, and uh, it, they, you, don't, you can't that way get to know them. You can't find out their personality or anything because for them, in their ministry to you, it is their teachers or the Koran and they'll use the Bible to show you where the Bible's wrong or where the Bible says Islam's right. What we have here is a, another intensive influx of another religion into America. So now you have a Pacific Asian religious influx to a huge degree and now we're having an influx of uh, for the past uh, decade and a half or so of Islam. Beside the ordinary increases that we see without these wars. So what does that mean? We, we have the immediacy of major religious changes in America. And what does the Bible say about this kind of a thing? Uh, because there's not much that we can do about it to say outlawed or make laws against it because you know we're a free country and it's people have the right to worship as they they will. But if we're looking at who is winning, as it were, more souls, it, it gives you the, the concept that now everywhere you turn, we really have to be careful about saying anything about Islam. In fact, there are, you know, the big Christian network, one of them at least, will ban people if they speak against Islam on their TV network. Uh, and uh, there's a couple of major uh, prophecy teachers, anyway, that has been banned simply because they were um, talking sort of negatively about the other religion coming, getting involved here. So, what is this going to mean? Well, first of all, the Bible says you shouldn't be mixing yourself with these people. Well, America is unique. So we have to understand this kind of a concept. So what we have here is what the true ideal of Christianity is, and that is to be a witness. You witness your walk in Jesus Christ. You don't produce the law of God. If we produce the law of God, we got to obey the law of God means we're going to hell because we can't. 
We have to start sacrificing animals and stuff. If you're trying to point out somebody's sin, you got to remember, you got to point out your own sins. And if you're interested in getting people to obey the law, as it were, then you need to obey the law. And when you don't, you need to sacrifice some sort of animal, according to the Bible and, and, and the very technique that they use, to be forgiven for that moment. So, we have many a time to consider our way of preaching the gospel message. Because we're not to, supposed to be out here preaching the law again, although many of you will try to point out people's sins. I'm on TV partly because that's what you want to do. You want to say gay is sin without explaining how you got the Bible to say gay is sin. The Bible doesn't say gay is sin. But the Bible says you better be careful about other gods coming into the country. Well, we weren't careful. They're here. They're very much influ influential. And they are implementing their way of life in manners which changes our way of life sort of sub subtly and so we're not caring too much because we have enough space to still live our life but we bump into the changes that they are making in our government and so forth that's a subtle change in life as we know it is because other religion God states clearly he doesn't like this kind of thing of other religions being mixed in your life and that consequences aren't going to be so good. And the Bible explains what are the consequences, and they aren't fun. Because they usually, lots of people die or killed. If for some reason or another, the way God takes care of sin is physically killing lots of people. Because this is what happens so often when the nation of Israel is turning to other gods. This looks like I'm going to have to go into part five. And so, remember people, these religions that are coming to the country and that are growing amongst in the world is rising to a point now something's got to break. And I'm going to take a break here and come back with part five.